Good morning, good morning. We bless God for this day, Monday, February 14th, 2022, also known as Valentine's Day. But we're talking about another love right now, the love that John 15 and 13 says, Greater love have no man than this, that a man would lay down his life for his friends. We thank God that even if you're not married or in a romantic relationship that does not matter because we are grateful for the greatest love the love of jesus that he and he alone laid down his life so that you and i can be saved now guess what that's love thank you for joining me for yet another forever changing with ramonda moore brown weekly podcast And scripture of the week. And this week's scripture, although I mentioned John uh, 15, 13, but this week's scripture is uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 3. I'm going to read the entire verse, but I'm going to focus on the last line of that verse. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, Not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man a measure of faith. We thank God for the measure of faith. Uh, This morning, I want to just share a little bit uh, about that scripture. And I've read it and I've heard it, but God just revealed something else to me that was just downright yummy to my tummy and I'm talking about the spiritual tummy because I love the fact that no matter how many times we hear the scripture we read the scripture we can continue to get more and more revelation through God's word amen so uh every man has been dealt a measure of faith and I spoke uh yesterday in service Uh, a little bit kind of on this and and some other things that I tied together. And the Lord said, this is worthy, you know, to be shared again because it was so powerful and so profound. And I begin to to talk about uh, football and basketball teams because, you know, I have sons that are interested in that and I wanted to really relate it, but it can be related to anybody, old or young. And we, I talked about how the basketball team, because everybody seems to have their favorite player and they think the team just can't make it without that player and that player just won the game. And I wanted to remind them, and I remind you on today, that the player doesn't win the game. They may score the most points. But even though I don't know a whole lot about a basketball or football even, but I do know that the opposing team is coming for the one with the ball. And if the one with the ball is not covered, or as we say, we say covered, that's a spiritual uh, outlook, but if they're not guarded, then the other team is going to take them down. In football, they're going to tackle them. In uh, basketball, they're going to take the ball. So it takes the whole team uh, to, to guard this person so that this person can make that winning shot shot or run down uh, the field. Now, somebody might say, what in the world is she talking about? Well, we're going to also tie into this a little bit further down into that scripture, how God mentions about us all being a member of one body. We're all being a a member of one body, and it takes us all. That's verse four, a little bit further down. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, this same thing applies to the football field, the basketball field, the church, whatever it is, your office, whatever, the ministry, whatever it is. First of all, go back to the top of chapter of, of verse 3. You ought not think of yourself more highly than you are, because, and neither myself as well. Because regardless of how important our job may seem, 
There are people who are holding your arms up, people paving the way, people guarding, people covering, whatever the case may be. You're not doing it. I'm not doing it alone. So we have to remember that, uh, you know, we got to stay humble and we got to stay grounded because it's not even a, about any us anyways. It's about the team uh, uh, as in basketball. No one likes the ball hold. You know, it's a team effort. We could take it to church. You know, uh, we have uh, the pastor or uh, uh, the leaders of the church, and, and and they're great. They're the visionaries. But we have people who clean the church. We have people who keep order in the church. We have people to handle the church business aspect. Everybody from the Sunday school uh, teacher to the groundskeepers, whatever the case may be, we are all one body you know, having different giftings or different assignments, even with the gift, the gift of prophecy, the gift of teaching, the gift of ministry, whatever the the case may be, in order for this thing to be effective, everybody has to take their place, but everybody also has to stay in their place. Yes, I said it. I'm going to repeat that again. Everybody has to take their place, but everybody has to stay in their place. And I know that that is a big part of the breakdown of the the organized church on today because uh, we have to value those that others seem small. You know, I did a, 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 what do you call it, demonstration yesterday where I duct tape my thumb and I was trying to use, uh, pick up a spoon and use it and it wasn't working. And I was, I love the way of, my my seven year old was just so uh, mesmerized by this, but uh, we need the thumb. It may seem you know uh, just kind of there. What is the thumb for? But it's so important on helping us hold the things and do what we need with our hands. You know, I often I I, I joked about the we really just focus on the ring finger, honey, because everybody want to put a ring on it, and that was just a joke. But that's the truth. We kind of tend to focus on something. When we're missing something or we're we're not giving value to something else that we need so well. So we need it all. And back to this measure of faith. I'm not I'm not off topic. I'm gonna tie it right on in. We go to the one with the talents, and we're talking about the talents. You know, one had one talent, one had five, and one had ten. And the one that had a one talent, you know, we could take it to school, you know. Uh, the one that had one talent, you know, they're oftentimes the one that, you know, they're not motivated to do what it takes to get the job done. You don't want to be the student that every time on the progress report uh, at the bottom, any comments, the teacher comments says this person has great potential, you know, but they won't do what it takes to get to do the work and get the grades. Well, then you have the one that five with five talents, you know, we're going to say that's the one that that that, you know, will, will do their best, but they may not be the one with the creative genius or the spin on it, you know, and then we have the one with 10 who, you know, just uh, do the work, but, you know, excel sales in it all. But when we talk about this uh, scripture of the talents in the Bible, you know, we get so caught up in the, you know, one, uh, the five got five more that made 10, the 10 got 10 more that made 20. But guess what the Lord revealed to me? The one that had five and the one that had ten, the one that had five did the same exact thing. He doubled what he had. So although we want to celebrate the one that had ten for doubling, you know, and getting 20 more, we're looking at the number. But the one that had five, he doubled what he had too. So isn't that something to think about? But we can't get always caught up in the numbers. But the fact is, you can't go bury your talent. You can't sit down and wish. And I'm taking it right here in the spirit. You can't sit down and know that you can sing, know that you can preach, know that, you know, you have the gift of of, of healing or, or the hospitality or serving or cooking, whatever the case may be. You can't just sit down and think about, you know, i I would really like to do this or I can do it here and there, but you never put your all into it. You're not working your measure of faith to go back and tell you if I, the title is, what are you doing with your measure of faith? 
What are you doing with the measure of faith? What are you doing? Tie that in with the talents God gave you and your measure of faith. Because you can have super, you can have so many talents and giftings that it's just unreal. But if you're not working those things, you're just wasting it. So what are you doing with your measure of faith? How are you working it? Are you trusting God? Are you only doing what you can see with your eye? Are you trusting God to lead you to do what he wants you to do, which is going to require you to study, to show yourself approved? That's going to require you to steal away and spend time with him blocking out the noise and opinions of others. Are you going to be able to stop pleasing people to realize how you need to please God? Are you going to do something that you've never seen? Can you believe it? Or are you going to be on the safe side and decide I'll do a little bit, but I won't ever really step over into this because it may fail. And then the what ifs comes and the shoulda, coulda, wouldas come. What are you doing with your measure of faith? It's time to decide what are you going to do with what God has given you? Do you even know? And it's okay to say, I don't even know. But then you have to use those same uh, principles to find out what it is that God wants you to do with what you have. But one of the worst enemies that you can have is you. One of the worst enemies that I can have is me. And one of the worst things I can do or you can do to yourself is to waste valuable time thinking and dreaming and never putting your hands to work. I'm going to say that again. One of the worst things you can do is sit back and think and dream, but never put your hands to work. Never put your mind to work. Never research what is required. Never seek the Lord truly for what is required. We have to do that. We can't get stuck on what happened last time. That is just like telling a child who's learning how to walk because they fall. You'll never be able to walk. That doesn't make any sense. As long as they they practice and they don't, they don't have a medical condition. As long as they keep getting back up every time they fall, they're going to eventually get it. And it's a wonder why, you know, uh, be, having childlike faith is just an amazing tool. Those kids know I'm going to get back up and do this again because it's something on the other side of the room that I want. It's a toy that I want. It's a piece of food that I want. I want to go get in my mom's lap or dad's lap. Whatever the case may be, there has to be something in view that keep you getting back up, dusting or brushing off yourself and trying it again. So I ask you again, what are you doing with your measure of faith? And the scripture says, uh, you have to think, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to. And this is not scripture and I'm not pre- trying to pretend that it's in there. But I will ask you this question. Don't think of yourself more lowly than God created you to be. Did you hear what I just said? No, you shouldn't think that you're better than anyone but you can't walk around thinking you're poor, pitiful, and, and life is over for you. You won't ever achieve what God created you to achieve. That's why the scripture said you have to think soberly. Soberly is right there facing where you are and dealing with what you have. Okay? No, I'm not better than anyone. But God created me in his likeness, in his image. And that means I'm worth something because you know that voice in your head is going to try to keep you from seeing yourself the way God sees you. God gave you a gift. He gave you a measure of faith. So what are you doing with your measure of faith? You are a part of a body. We need you. The enemy wants you to think that you're not necessary. They, he wants you to think that no one needs your, as they say, two cents. That's not true. You are part of a body. You are a member. Even in the church, they call it a member. Even if it's a club, you are a member. 
You are a vital member of something and you are needed. You are necessary, but you have to be sober minded and vigilant about who you are and where you belong. And only God can give you that information when, and you can walk in power. You know, I love this thing, power, love, and a sound mind. This is some amazing stuff. It may cause us to go back and take a, 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 you know, a step back and look at where we are. It's okay to take this time right now to reevaluate some things. It's okay to take some time right now and shut down from the things that keep you so busy, that keep you uh, kind of pulled. Because you have to be in a, in that word sober. It just, it, you know, you're not in, intoxicated. You're not overwhelmed. We don't have to be talking about substances. You're not overwhelmed with the cares of life. You're not overwhelmed with anxiety. You're not overwhelmed with everybody needing something from you. Sober-minded means you have to be able to say no to some things. You have to be able to say not now to some things, but you have to get in the place where you are sure. You're sure, even if it's to say, I'm sure right now that I need to be still sober-minded. Amen. God is so amazing. He loves to, even when we get further along on our journey, we have to have what we're going to call checkpoints where we check ourselves because it's so easy to start out doing something. And before you know it, you can look back and, and you kind of veered away a little bit or you lost yourself. And it's okay because you're wrapped in flesh. But we're going to take a moment. I would advise you, I would challenge you this week to take a moment and do some checkpoints. Checkpoints. See where you are. See what where you are now versus where God wants you to be. See where you are now versus where you and, and where you were headed when you started out. It's okay to take some time to check out where you are so that you can make sure that you are uh, in a sober mindset. That you're doing what you're supposed to be doing in this hour. Also realizing that we need you. The body of Christ needs you. Your family needs you. Somebody on the your job needs you. Somebody you're going to cross paths with. They need you. Uh, I, you know, I, I took my kids to the park and I was sitting there and there was a woman, an elderly lady, and there was just an overwhelming sense of pray with her and and I was so glad I did. Her, her smile just got even brighter. And I'm telling you, sometime, you know, somebody, I don't know what she needed. And that wasn't my business. But I just did what the Lord said and prayed with her. Somebody you're going to come across, even a smile, or you look good today, or I like your shoes, or I like it. You just never know what those words will mean to someone. So just being in the right place at the right time. I pray that there is something that I have said today that would encourage and empower you along your journey to remember to work your measure of faith, to remember that you are a part of a body. You are necessary. We win together. We, we have gotten away from the togetherness of being Christians. It's a together thing. We're talking about communities and families and and, and it's not uh, me, myself, and I, not this journey. We bless God for this day and what he's teaching us and how he's unfolding and, and, and releasing and revealing his mysteries unto us. Amen. We're going to pray, and then I'm going to release you to go about the rest of your day. Amen. Again, if there are any prayer requests or anything of that nature, feel free to reach out to me, and I will definitely agree with you in prayer. Amen. Father, we thank you on today. We thank you that you created us, Lord God, with intention. You were intentional in creating every single one of us with purpose for a purpose. We are not accidents. I don't care what anybody has spoken over us. We are not accidents. God, it was your will being fulfilled 
for such a time as this. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that we can all stop and take a checkpoint moment to see where we are, where we need to be, and understand that it's okay to begin again. It's okay to fall down, brush ourselves up, and get back up again, Lord God. We thank you that uh, everybody who will hear this podcast, Lord God, we cover them under the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that you would cover and keep them and their families, God, that every need will be met, Lord God. Those unspoken needs, those things of shame, God, that they won't plague them anymore. Lord, we thank you that they will, as I repeat, because I know it is so necessary during this time of condemnation and and accusation of the enemy that your people will boldly walk in power, love, and the sound mind, God. Oh, God, we cover every illness, every infirmity of the mind, the body, or the spirit, God. And we give you glory and honor for everything that you're doing to and through your people. Lord, we thank you for this moment in time, and we don't take it for granted that we are alive and we have another day to live for you, and to learn from you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. Again, I thank you for those who are new to the podcast. We thank you for stopping by on today and clicking that button so you can hear the nuggets from the Lord. Uh, we, we are available to be heard on Apple Podcasts, uh, Google Play Music, Spotify, and even Anchor. Um, so wherever your favorite place is, feel free uh, to. So uh, you can follow or subscribe to the podcast there. And we ask that you just share this with somebody who needs the word right now, who needs to be empowered or encouraged. I love you all. God bless you. Be encouraged. But most of all, allow the God who of all creation, who is your father to make you whole.